All right, so today we're diving into a story that um, feels kind of ripped from the headlines, you know? Mm -hmm. This whole thing with the America First Policy Institute getting hacked. Yeah. AFPI. Yeah, AFPI, big story. Big story, and I'm sure some people are hearing this and thinking like, another day, another cyber attack, but... right. This one's got layers, right? It does. It does. You got, you know, yeah. first you got to understand who we're talking about. Right. Um, this isn't just some random think tank. Right. They're a big deal, especially in certain, you know, political circles. Yeah, they wield some influence for sure. Yeah. And we know they're close with Trump, right? Yeah. Which adds a whole other layer to this. But for sure. Before we even get into the why, what happened? Okay. So basically, ABC News dropped this report. Okay. Right. Okay. Saying AFPI was targeted by hackers. Okay. And get this. They think it's the Chinese government. Whoa, hold on a second. So this isn't like some teenager in their basement, right? No. This is potentially a state-sponsored attack. It's looking that way, yeah. How, I mean, what makes them think it's China? Well, so it's still early, right? Right. They're not releasing a ton of details about the investigation. Sure. But, you know, from what they're saying, it sounds like um, the tactics they use, the sophistication, mm. kind of points to, you know, a nation-state operation. Right, right. And China's been known to dabble in this kind of thing. Yeah, especially when it comes to, like, political opponents, right? Exactly. So what's AFPI saying about all this? So their spokesperson, um, Mark Lauder, right. he actually said, and I quote, As the leading policy group in the America First movement, it is not surprising that hostile foreign actors would attempt to infiltrate our IT. Wait, so they're almost expecting this? Sounds like it. That's kind of wild, right? Yeah. It just shows how how volatile this all is, right? Especially in these, you know, organizations, they're dealing with some pretty high level information. For sure, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is this is it could be huge. It could be. All right, so we've got potential international intrigue, high stakes politics, and some, you know, digital espionage. It's a lot. It's a lot. Where do we even go from here? Well, you know. Pay attention to who else picks up the story. Okay, yeah. If this is big, you know, if it really is a state-sponsored thing, right. it could have a much wider impact. Yeah, this could be a much bigger story than it even looks like right now. Exactly. So we're talking about China potentially trying to, like, get a peek behind the curtain at a major U.S. think tank. Yeah. What kind of information are we even talking about here? And why would they even, why would they care? So you got to think of think tanks like... Um, like idea factories, right? They're coming up with policy proposals and strategy and all that. Right. And in this case, with AFPI, yeah. we're talking about some pretty big issues. Yeah. You know, things that could directly affect, like, U.S. foreign policy, trade deals, even military strategy. Just high-level stuff. Yeah, and if you're China, I mean, right. that's, that's got to be valuable. So it's not just, like, stealing secrets, right? Yeah, yeah. no. It's more about understanding your opponent. Exactly. Yeah. Like you said, it's like getting in their heads, right? Mm -hmm. Understanding like what they're thinking, what their goals are. Right. Like what what's the game plan, basically? Yeah. Yeah. And in this world, you know, knowledge, that's power. Oh, yeah. Like the more you know about what your opponent's going to do, the better you can, you know, plan your own moves. Right. Right. This is starting to sound like a like a chess match or something. It kind of is. But OK, let's bring it back down to earth for a second. Like, what does this actually mean for AFPI? Mm. What are the what are the consequences of something like this? Well, on a practical level, I mean, they got to be freaking out about damage control. Oh, for sure. Like we're yeah. talking about potentially really sensitive data getting out, donor info, internal communications, who knows. Right. They've got to figure out what's out there and then I mean, they got to lock everything down so nothing else gets out. Yeah, that's I mean, that's a PR nightmare right there. Oh, absolutely. And then on top of that, you have to wonder about the whole trust thing. Yeah. If they're seen as vulnerable, like how does that impact them moving forward? It's huge. It's a huge blow to their credibility. Yeah. And then, I mean, it makes you wonder about other think tanks too, right? Right. Like, are they doing enough to protect themselves? Yeah. Yeah. Because this is, this isn't going away. No, this is the new reality. It feels like a wake up call, honestly. Yeah, for sure. Not just for them, but for anyone dealing with this kind of information. It's like, welcome to the digital age, right? Exactly. Like, <laughs> Cybersecurity. Yeah. This isn't just an IT thing anymore. Yeah. This is this is national security. So I mean, this isn't just about like protecting data anymore, right? It's, right. It's bigger than that. It's about protecting ideas, strategies. Yeah. The whole like the heart of how policy is made. 
It's a lot. So, like, what do we do? Where do we even begin with something like this? Well, I mean, first we got to get real about the threat, right? Like organizations, they got to they got to invest in serious cybersecurity. So it's more than just like you know changing your passwords every once in a while. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. We're talking multi-factor authentication, intrusion yeah. detection, security audits, all that stuff. Yeah. But I mean, it's also it's more than just the technology, right? right. It's, it's about like building awareness. Right. Right. You know, teaching employees about phishing and social engineering and all the ways these hackers can, you know, kind of trick people. So it's about being proactive, not reactive. Exactly. Don't wait for it to happen. But I mean, it's not just on these big organizations, right? What about like our listeners? Right. What can what can everyday people do to protect themselves? Yeah. So I mean, for most people, it's about good cyber hygiene, right? Mm -hmm. Like strong passwords, different passwords for every account. Right. Right. Be careful about what you click on in emails. Make sure your software is up to date. That kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like locking your front door, even if you live in a good neighborhood. Right? Exactly. Just that that little bit can go a long way. Absolutely. Because at the end of the day, this isn't just about, you know, hackers stealing data. Right. It's about like our privacy, our security, you know, our right to to even just talk about these things. Yeah. Yeah. Like without worrying about someone listening in. Exactly. Wow. OK. So we covered a lot here today. It went from, you know, this hack on AFPI to like the future of the Internet, basically. The whole shebang. Yeah. If our listeners take one thing away from all of this, what should it be? Information is power, right? Mm -hmm. And protecting that power, that's on all of us. That's a good place to leave it. Thanks for coming on the show today. Yeah. Thanks for having me. And to everyone listening, stay vigilant out there. <laughs>